Buckling is the least intuitive of all, but not for long because you're gonna learn absolutely everything. BD Master Class. <laughs> Back at the beginning, we use the concept of buckling to explain the behavior of folds. Remember? And it's the same idea. When an object can no longer withstand longitudinal forces, it will buckle. Fabric has a tendency to buckle, and that's where folds are formed. But then Marvelous went and added properties for the folds of the folds. It's the inception of folds. So I want to drill four ideas about buckling into your head, just like in Inception. I want to plant an idea deep within your mind so that you wake up as a better, more improved person. If simply stretching and bending your body do not achieve the results you are truly hoping to achieve, then you can always use buckling to further refine and perfect the folds in your body, making them even better and more precise. And not buckling before everything else. Trying to get folds just by simply lowering the overall amount of bending, especially up there at the very top of the list, will actually make the entire garment lose its structure. It will in fact collapse. The whole shape will be destroyed. Buckling as a phenomenon in structural mechanics allows us to define local bending. Local bending isn't a property we set directly. It doesn't exist anywhere in the program. Local bending is the result of multiplying buckling stiffness by bending, the original bending. Buckling stiffness and bending, the value of this stiffness should be interpreted as a percentage, and that percentage would be multiplied by the bending. If you set the stiffness to 10, that's 10%. 20, 20%, right? Let's use an example then. If you have a bending of 50 up there, overall, and the stiffness is set to 10, that 10 means 10%. You're telling Marvelous that the formula is 10% of 50, which results in 5. 10% of 50 is 5. Therefore, the folds will have a local bending of 5, while the fabric will have an overall bending of 50. 50 means 50% 50 resistance, and 5 means 5% resistance. In other words, the folds within the folds will have much less resistance and will bend more. You get more folds in total. Look at your mind being blown. And finally, I always recommend adjusting both values, ratio and stiffness, in case you want to add buckling as a property of your fabric. You'll usually notice that the knit presets have both of these values set to zero, essentially turning off buckling. That's because Knit fabrics usually have softer folds and don't require this setting. And in contrast, woven fabrics have more defined folds and therefore need these values. And you'll also notice this reflected in the presets. This here is the little scene I set up to demonstrate buckling. But we're not going to see it in real time, because unlike the other tests we've seen so far, buckling is easier to visualize in context and in images by looking at the final result. Because sometimes the result is so subtle that if you watch the simulation run, you'll think nothing has changed, and then you won't understand what's going on. So that's why we're going to leave here and look at some images. Now we have this beautiful image here. All these patterns have the resolution set to 5 in the particle distance. So it's already relatively high, almost the final resolution for exporting. And the other thing you might find strange is that only the last example we're going to see now has buckling. Then you might say, hey, but I want to learn about buckling and there's no buckling being shown. Then you ask, are you going to teach buckling? Whoa, hold on. To understand buckling, you need to understand what everything is doing in context, all at once, together. And then you'll see where to fit buckling into this mess. And that's also because I want to show that you can achieve a lot without buckling. That's what I want to get into your head. One of the things. Anyway, let's go. The first one here is the default material. And it really is generic. It could pass for several types of fabrics, and it's only here to serve as a comparison, because we have to start somewhere. So it's great for that reason, regardless of what you think it looks like. Here it's going to serve as a comparison with the rest. Let's go. The first one we're going to compare it to is the t-shirt fabric. Take a look. It's the most common fabric, the one almost all t-shirts are made of, which is knit cotton jersey in Marvelous. Visually, you can notice that it stretches a bit more and falls a bit less. It has less drape. If we look at the values, they reflect that. This fabric has higher resistance to stretching and bending, and it also has lower density and zero buckling. In other words, we looked at the image, tried to predict based on what we know about the values, and the values matched what we understood. 
Next, the pack sweatshirt. Wow! With the sweatshirt, the folds are much bulkier and it bends even less. Evade one, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Look at that, back and forth. Look at the seam on the left sleeve, how it rises. So look, here is the default. Then in the t-shirt, it rises a bit. It's rising more here, see? And the sweatshirt rose even more. It became bulkier. The absence of buckling is clear in this one as well. It prevents the folds from breaking easily because it's the sweatshirt we're working with. And the numbers reflect everything we've done. Even though the density is a bit higher now, the resistance to bending is much greater, almost double, in the sweatshirt. Resistance to bending, almost double, and it's not using buckling. And we've already managed two types of fabric without using buckling. Remember that these two here, they're knit, they're not woven, right? Next, leather. Well, leather is very interesting because it has even more structure. Once again, look at the sleeve. It rose just a little bit more, but it also seems to have more folds, right? So how can it be more resistant to one thing, but create more folds when I thought one thing was connected to the other? Well, if we put together what the numbers are telling us, it's this. The high bending value is giving the fabric more structure. And its high stretch value helps in the formation of folds. Remember what I said about stretch? High stretch tends to create more folds compared to zero or very low stretch, which will stretch your fabric like an elastic band. And with the higher density of leather, the drape returns to its place. If you leave the density low on leather, the clothing can start to puff up too much, trying to keep its shape without folding, almost floating on the character. So look, we combined these things without using buckling and created a third super complex material, which is leather. And now I'm going to go back once more, just so we can see the construction. T-shirt, sweatshirt, leather. Lastly, nylon, which has the most stylized and most complex folds of all on this list. Personally, it's the one I like the most, visually, regardless of whether it's nylon or something else. I like the way they look. To begin with, nylon is a very special and incredibly strange material. In fact, it's quite unusual because it's entirely and completely synthetic and the name nylon is more the name of a family of products than a specific type of fabric. The industry produces an endless variety of types of nylon, far beyond just clothing. Is the human version of spider silk. Usually, clothes are a blend of nylon with some other natural material, like cotton. So if you want to reproduce a specific type of nylon that you've seen, you'll have to do it by eye, analyzing how it holds itself and how it folds in photos. And then you'll use what we've learned here to reproduce that nylon. Back to this image here. The quality of the folds has changed a lot. As you can see, they're much more pronounced. Really cool. And it kind of reminds me of sportswear. Look at how the fold from the bust comes down. Really well defined here and wraps around the body. Look at how this line is so well defined. And the fold here behind the left knee breaks in that super interesting way where the tip of the fold gets thinner and more pronounced. Check it out. It almost looks like there's a metal structure there and it actually broke right here. In real life, a nylon garment is a woven fabric, meaning it's a flat fabric made on some kind of mechanical loom. That being said, this preset has buckling, but that's not the only difference. The effect is achieved. The effect is achieved by combining very low bending and stretch resistance, like between 10 and 20. And density plays a crucial role in this type of fabric here. It shows zero, but in reality, it's not zero. The value is actually quite small if you open up that little arrow in the property. It's 33 grams per square meter because you can't have a fabric with zero density, right? Now, finally, about buckling. I made an entire chapter about buckling and didn't show buckling, but actually you are understanding buckling. It's just that you don't need to use the number to understand buckling. This preset has a ratio there in the buckling section of 30 and the stiffness also in buckling of 25. Translated, it goes like this. The 30 for the ratio means it has 30% more likelihood of forming folds, of those folds breaking, of buckling happening, and the local bending of those folds is 25% of the overall bending. Look, the 25 for stiffness is a percentage, 25% of the overall bending. The overall bending is 20, 
25% of 20 is 5. The local resistance of the folds is quite low, it's only 5. Overall resistance to folding is 20, and local resistance to folding is 5. The fold of the fold. But what if we use the same preset, only without buckling? Copy it, apply it again, and remove the buckling. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to ruin everything? Do you think you're going to lose your nylon? I've got it here. Take a look at the nylon without buckling. This is the result of the nylon without buckling. Wow, but is that allowed? Anything is allowed, as long as you understand what's happening. Honestly, this result could even pass for nylon with those pronounced creases if we hadn't seen anything and didn't have many photos, and you just did it quickly, and that's it. It works. It works perfectly well. It's a great result that could pass for nylon. So notice once again that buckling is just that final touch on fabric that's already working. If your fabric works with the other properties, you might not even need to use buckling, as we're seeing here now. And I'm going to switch again. Look, with buckling, without buckling. With buckling, without buckling. And now we're going to make another comparison. If we increase the buckling ratio to 90, what will happen? We need to know before it happens, right? Let's try to interpret this. It means there's about a 90% chance of folds forming. So in this situation, we should see more folds, right? Let's go. That's exactly what happened. The result behind the legs was super clear. Look how beautiful that is. I'm going to go back here. Look. This is the regular nylon, and this is the same preset, but with the ratio set to 90. Look how many folds we got behind the leg here. And more breaks. See how this big fold, which was coming from the butt all the way to behind the knee, split into another one. Ratio 90, standard ratio. Ratio 90, standard preset. And if you really start to analyze it closely, you'll be able to find other details there. But basically, that's it. More breaks happening, which is exactly what this property tells us it will do. And I know I didn't even need to show it, because you've already understood everything. You're a genius. But I'm going to show it anyway. And what about stiffness? And what about stiffness? And what about stiffness by Vera? Here's the thing. I've already said it, I think about 20 times by now, that the buckling stiffness defines the local bending, which is the resistance to bending. I'm going to set the stiffness to 2 here. Lower the resistance to bending. So that means that 2% of the overall bending will be the local bending. The overall bending is already low, right? It's 20. So I'm going to take that 20, calculate 2% of it, which gives a local resistance, a local bending, of 4. In other words, very little resistance to bending. And I even increased, I even increased the resolution to see this effect. So what's going to happen? Think about it. Think about it and whisper it to me. See the effect with a high ratio and low stiffness. See how many falls we've created. See how many appear here between the existing false falls within falls. This square marking is from the polygon, the model's butt. It's very low poly, but ignore that. Look at how many special folds we're able to achieve. And it's starting to lose some of its structure. This fold, dependent on the fabric structure, is starting to drop. Look at that. And it also got thinner, because it needs some internal force to hold that curve down there. So everything is sagging. But the overall structure is good, as the general bending hasn't changed. Bending binds it. If you don't change it, work well, you won't ruin your t-shirt. You saw I wasn't entering numbers. I knew what I wanted to achieve. I had a nylon preset, knew different aspects of nylon, and kept that look as I made changes. If you try the same thing with a sweatshirt preset, you'll get something else. As it lacks those folds, you wouldn't use buckling. I only use buckling on nylon because I know this fabric looks like this due to these properties. The last point is that if you increase the buckling stiffness too much, you'll cancel out the effect because it doesn't make sense. You're trying to get folds through buckling, but then you increase stiffness, keep stretch, and lower the ratio he used buckling. So adjust these values wisely based on what they produce and fabric type you're recreating.